Give us a sense, first of all, we have a pandemic. Nobody expected that, for goodness sakes. How has that affected your work at the CFTC? Well, thank you so much for having me, David, and, and thank you to all your viewers and listeners. Uh, it has been a tremendous 12 months, and, and we have gotten so much done. The men and women of the CFTC have really risen to the occasion. Uh, we have had 12 open meetings, and this week we're going to have meetings 13 and 14, and that's more than the last six years of the CFTC uh, had combined. Uh, that said, in the middle of it, as you mentioned, we have had this major challenge, COVID-19 and its impact on our markets. And the, the good news is, for everyone, is that our derivatives markets have remained incredibly resilient. Uh, they're working the way just as we intended them to work. Uh, the, the system is safe and sound, and it's enabled many Americans to go ahead and hedge the risks that they're experiencing because of this crisis. Have you had any real strains on the markets? And let me point at one specifically that you and I both know has been some strain, which is the, the oil market. Uh, the energy commodities market really went through a time where we actually had negative prices assigned to it. And I know that you've initiated an investigation of the CFTC to see whether the markets really functioned properly through that or whether, heaven forfend, there might have been some manipulation going on. That's exactly right, David. So we are, we are working on that inquiry right now. And I think even before we saw prices go negative, it was something that many in the market did, in fact, uh, expect to as a possibility. Uh, we saw the exchanges change their pricing models from the black model uh, on futures to something called the Bashier model, which uh, the main difference is that it takes into account negative prices. And so that happened a few weeks before uh, we saw prices go negative. And of course, fundamental supply and demand uh, strains on the economy, demand going down sharper than it ever has in, in recent history. And then, of course, uh, supply continuing, if not expanding, because of some of the things that Saudi Arabia and Russia were doing at the time. All of those macro factors contributed to a negative pricing. But what we want to do is to get down to the bottom to actually go through the order book and determine uh, why the price went as far down as it did so quickly. Again, it's worth remembering that only a very small tra amount of trades actually traded at a negative amount. But it was certainly a historic period. And so we want to explain to the American public what happened and why. And obviously, if we see that there was any kind of fraud or manipulation, we will open up a, a relevant investigation. You haven't completed your investigation yet, so presumably you don't know how it's going to come out. But do you have any sense of when you might have a result? We're hoping to have a, a result this fall. Okay, this fall. Uh, in the meantime, there's a fair amount of regular work, if I can put it that way, including some of the regulations uh, on the trail of some, some legislation you actually were involved in up, uh, when you were in the Senate staff. Where are you on those regulations at this point? Particularly, I know that you did some stuff on swaps, international swaps. Absolutely. So, so this week, David, of course, is the 10th anniversary of the Dodd-Frank Act. Uh, it had some positive aspects. It had some negative aspects. But most importantly, what we've heard from the business community for the last decade is we need certainty. So the good news is this week we will actually finish up final rules on two of our most significant outstanding items from that period. The first is capital rules for swap dealers. And the second, as you alluded to, is, of course, the international rules. When do we bring foreign transactions into the ambit of the United States? And there we're going to sort of hit the reset button to ensure that while we're protecting against U.S. risk, we're also being respectful of our regulatory counterparts, which for the most part have also implemented all the G20 reforms. Well, and that's what I'm particularly curious about, Chairman Tarbert, which is your relationship on the one hand with the SEC, because there's been some jurisdictional back and forth, tug and pull there when it comes to some of these regulations, and also your international counterparts. How are you working out those relationships? Because there is some overlapping of jurisdiction in some of these areas. Well, you're exactly right, David. And, and of course, market participants don't make fine distinctions between what's a securities-based swap and what's a CFTC-regulated swap or what's within the jurisdiction of the European Central Bank versus our jurisdiction. They just want to get their transactions done. And so that has required us to coordinate perhaps more than ever to make sure that our, that our rules are harmonized to the extent that it makes sense so it's easier on the market. I'll just give you one example. Uh, we will have a final rule this week, which actually harmonizes the definition of U.S. person. 
as simple as that is. It doesn't have anything to do with securities or commodities, but the CFTC and the SEC hadn't even agreed on what it meant by a U.S. person. So things like that had caused a lot of concern among uh, those in our market participants and in the financial markets, and they've asked us to resolve it. And so we will, we will harmonize where it makes sense to harmonize. And then, of course, if there are very specific reasons why it makes sense to do something a little different, we'll make sure we justify that. So, so Chairman Trevor, it strikes me that you have a lot on your platter. As you say, you've done an awful lot in your first 12 months. At the same time, you've even got some other responsibilities. You have a fairly extensive background in international financial regulation at the Treasury Department, up on the Hill. And actually, the president put you on a team to take a look at Chinese securities and the question of possibly delisting them because we don't have full access into all the audit papers on some of these publicly traded companies. Where are, should we be on that as a policy matter as the United States? Well, we obviously need to carefully consider it. We need to understand uh, the potential impact that that has on U.S. investors. If, in fact, uh, we aren't able to look at the working statements, our PCAOB, there's a real concern that we're not protecting U.S. investors, uh, as we are with other jurisdictions where those working papers are made available. That said, it's obviously a sensitive topic, and the president, by executive order, has delegated that to the president's working group on, on financial markets. Uh, the SEC and the Treasury Department obviously have a, have a major lead there, and so we're in discussions now to think about the best way to address it. So, Chairman Terry, you're only a, a year into your, your tenure. You've got a long way to go. But sometimes it helps to think about what you want to leave behind when the time comes for you to leave. What is the legacy you want, most want to import? What do you want to accomplish in the broadest terms for the financial markets, for investors, for citizens? In the broadest possible terms, our new mission statement, I think, succinctly states what we're all about. And that's sound regulation that leads to integrity, resilience, and vibrancy. We want our markets to continue to have integrity. That means when you go to the markets and you look at the prices, those prices actually represent real supply and demand that you can depend upon. Whether you're actually in the market yourself or whether you're, you're looking at those prices and making business decisions based on them. We want our markets to be resilient, and that's another key asset, a factor. In, in 2008, there was a real concern that derivatives, particularly the uncleared derivatives, the over-the-counter swaps that were opaque, were actually exacerbating and amplifying systemic risk. We want the opposite to be the case. We want our markets to be resilient. So regardless of what happens out there with, with the volatility of prices, the system itself re remains strong. And then finally, we want our markets to be vibrant. That means they're continuing to produce new and innovative uh, instruments and new and in innovative ways of handling risk. Uh, and, and in that regard, we're starting to see uh, digital assets and cryptocurrency, as it's called, enter into our market space. So the CFTC, despite regulating corn and wheat, also now finds ourselves regulating Bitcoin and Ether. And so it, 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 those would be the three things that I would focus on and make sure the CFTC is focused on today, but 10 and 20 years down the road. And a strong light regulator has to make sure we have enough regulation, but not too much. Where do you think we have too much right now and where maybe don't we have quite enough? Well, the real key, David, I think, is determining whether or not we apply a principles-based approach or a rules-based approach. And one of the things I've also tried to look into is articulating a bunch of objective standards as to when we would apply a principles-based approach, which offers flexibility and allows for innovation, uh, provided that the approach is reasonable. And then in other areas, a rules-based approach, which is much more specific and granular. And that has benefits as well. It provides market certainty, and it also pr 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 provides some degree of protections against uh, investors, uh, against uh, manipulating the market and investors. And so finding that delicate balance between areas in which we apply principles uh, that, are, that are a little bit more flexible, and other areas where we have clear, crisp rules that, ha that provide certainty, I think that's the real key. And so we've been going through and thinking about that question very carefully.